Weeping with the frenemy. You will be familiar with the concept of a frenemy. One of the applications of this oxymoronic portmanteau is to describe a person who appears to be your friend, but is actually your enemy. The frenemy makes several appearances in the narcissistic world. The most obvious one is us. We appear as friend, but we are really the enemy. If you are an intimate partner who is the primary source, you witness this firsthand as love turns sour. As a secondary source, you also experience the narcissist as frenemy. It is not always obvious because, as that secondary source, you may experience a lengthy golden period. But even if you do, we are your enemy because we are taking from you, taking your fuel, acquiring your attributes for our own use and drawing on your resources by way of residual benefits, such as using your car, borrowing money, lagging invitations to events and so forth. The same applies to tertiary resources, who are more likely to witness the charm turn to malice as a consequence of a delayed serving in a store or giving attention to someone else instead of us at a bar. Our kind are the frenemy incarnate. If we are not plain using you for fuel and other benefits as we smile, charm and compliment, we then turn rogue on you, lashing out and devaluing you. With that stated, however, let us turn to another type of frenemy, the lieutenant, the loyal and obedient puppet that not only provides us with fuel, but supports us and carries out our wishes and wants without hesitation or complication. Every narcissist has at least one lieutenant, usually more, and the lieutenant performs a range of actions on our behalf. The lieutenant will naturally provide fuel Praising and admiring, being a great audience to our witty repartee, providing a sympathetic ear when we complain about the behaviour of others, and ensuring, as a dedicated secondary source, that we can always rely on them. The lieutenant can be relied on to acquire information for us in respect of the targeting of a potential victim. The lieutenant will form part of our facade and will welcome you with characteristic smile and warmth, be part of the coterie as soon as the command is given by us, they will turn their back on you and pretend that you never existed. He or she will do favours for us, ever eager to gain our trust and praise and outperform other lieutenants. This is especially so if the lieutenant is earmarked for potential recruitment to intimate partner in the future. It is not just the victim who receives some future faking. A lieutenant will be promised jam tomorrow, whatever it might be. Promotion to intimate partner, that promotion at work, the membership of that club that we can secure, a weekend away with us. Whatever lies within our gift will be dangled before this lieutenant in order to secure loyalty and their commitment to us. Of course, the rewards will be delivered from time to time, so long as we have extracted a sufficient price from our point of view. But future faking plays its part in keeping the lieutenant ready, willing and wanting. The lieutenant will also be used in our post-escape and post-discard campaigns. They will assist with hoovers, they will hoover on our behalf, prove receptive to our smearing of you, and indeed, assist in plastering mud about you far and wide. How then does our kind go about identifying and maintaining these lieutenant? Naturally, it depends on the nature of the relevant member of our kind. The Lesser Narcissist The Lesser Narcissist operates with fewer lieutenants than the other two schools. This is because he lacks the charm and ability to acquire them so readily, but also given his low control threshold, he also runs a greater risk of his devaluation of them, proving too much and resulting in them no longer remaining loyal, and thus they are either discarded or they escape the narcissist. The lesser has very little trust, and his inherent paranoia makes it difficult for him to create a wide network of those he can call on. Instead, he often relies on family members to be his lieutenants. Parents, siblings, extended family and adult children 
are common lieutenants of a lesser narcissist. In terms of friends, you may have one or two friends who are long-standing. These individuals are often childhood friends who have known the narcissist all his life and feel a sense of duty and obligation towards the narcissist, born out of when the narcissist put his furious temper to good use in giving a bully a good hiding and thus earning the ongoing gratitude and admiration of the lieutenant. This lieutenant is also frightened of the narcissist, as he knows what he is capable of, and consequently aims to stay on his good side, and therefore is very loyal. The lesser makes no conscious decision to recruit people to assist him, but rather, owing to his sense of entitlement, he expects those around him to do what he wants. Owing to his low sense of trust, he feels he can only rely on those close to him, either from blood or long-standing friends. The lesser ensures that those who are lieutenants do his bidding through a combination of guilt-tripping, we are family, you should have my back on this, or intimidation, if you don't do it, I'll kick your teeth in. It is rare to find a lesser able to recruit a lieutenant from your own ranks, and therefore your vigilance should be maintained primarily in respect of those people you know who are his friends and family. The mid-range narcissist. The mid-range narcissist is an extensive user of lieutenants because of his generally passive aggressive nature and he would rather have other people doing his dirty work for him. The greater is similar, but his rationale is different as we shall discover. The mid-range possesses sufficient cognitive function and pleasant charm to recruit suitable people to do his bidding. He will have a circle of dependable friends from whom he will draw a few lieutenants. He also makes extensive use of family and colleagues as well. The mid-range also recognises the benefit of having a lieutenant from within your ranks. He will do this on the basis of wanting to curry favour with you by cozying up to your parents, a sibling or a good friend in order to worm his way into their affections. He will not necessarily possess the out-and-out -out charm of the greater, but rather be regarded as a good egg, a decent person, and pleasant and likeable. The mid-range will ensure he has numerous lieutenants, because he will need them to be used extensively when he hoovers and smears at a later juncture. Master of the hard done to, he will tell his sob stories about how badly he has been treated by you in order to have those lieutenants propagate this proposition to others through a smear or to convey to you how much the narcissist is hurting and needs you back. The mid-range usually maintains his lieutenants by doing two things. He does not future fake extensively with lieutenants and whilst there may be occasional rewards, he does not rely on this to any great degree in order to keep his lieutenants loyal. He instead relies on being liked and also for people to feel sorry for him and thus they will do what he wants. He will use emotional blackmail extensively in order to ensure that his lieutenants act on his behalf. For instance, he will say things such as, I am in a bad place right now and you need to help me. I knew you couldn't stand by and see me treated like this. She has said some horrible things about you. Naturally, I defended you, so I know I can rely on you to do the same for me. It just isn't right for someone to behave like this. You are better at dealing with people like this. I am on the edge here. You need to help me out. I know she is your friend, but I don't think someone as decent as you would want to be associated with somebody who behaves like this, would you? I appreciate she is your daughter, but she is letting down your family with what she has done. The Greater Narcissist The Greater has many lieutenants. He recruits them from friends, colleagues, family and even acquaintances. The Greater makes its aim to have at least one, but usually more, from your ranks. His huge reserves of charm ensure that people are made to feel so special to be associated with him that they want to do his bidding. 
they want the greater's approval, favour and largesse. A master at future faking, the greater will not only reward those who carry out his commands, but he will also ensure that larger rewards are repeatedly on offer. These may be material in nature, but they are often based on elevation. Promotion from outer to inner circle friend, advancement from colleague to outer circle friend, potential to move from inner circle friend to intimate partner. The greater is no fool though, and will ensure that rewards are provided, not only to maintain the loyalty of the recipient, but to act as an incentive to the others who have not been rewarded on this occasion. If your narcissist seems to know when you leave home and arrive, do not be surprised to find that he has even recruited a neighbour minion as a lieutenant. The greater will use a varied range of techniques to ensure that his lieutenants remain loyal and willing to assist him. He uses reward, threats of devaluing behaviour, expulsion from the clique, emotional blackmail, smearing the victim so the lieutenant is motivated to do the right thing, threats of exposing or exploiting the vulnerability of the lieutenant. Of all of the three schools, the greater is the only one who engages in calculated behaviour to recruit and maintain his lieutenants. The lesser has a limited range to choose from, and thus there is no consideration given. He expects loyalty anyway. The mid-range narcissist does it by making himself likeable and then playing on a sense of obligation and loyalty. The greater will scrutinise those who will have something to lose and who will want to gain in order to use this information to his advantage in due course. These lieutenants will then be subjected to the love-bombing charm, adjusted appropriately depending on status, and brainwashed, along with the presence and effect of the facade, into believing that the greater is better than anything else, is to be worshipped and can do no wrong. Keep in mind that you, as an intimate partner, may well be recruited for lieutenant purposes as well, against the primary source that you have replaced. Think how often you have witnessed the incoming primary source join in on attacks against you once you escaped or you had been discarded. Indeed, using the primary source as a lieutenant in such circumstances takes them beyond the sphere of frenemy and into total enemy territory. That person remains a lieutenant nevertheless. We use lieutenants extensively. We ensure we maintain their loyalty, and you should always exercise caution in your dealings. You may think we are off the scene, you may think we have disappeared, but there are frenemies lurking all around you, ready to continue our campaigns against you.